I just have some uh, photos of calabashes, uh, some that I've made recently. These, well, they were the first two happen to be a little older. Um, if you guys have any questions at any time, just shoot them out and ask. Can I ask a quick question? Why are we out of uh, naivety? How long have you been making pipes? About 10 years. Cool. Yeah. So these are, uh, this is a, a smooth calabash. There happen to be two in this set of, yeah, you can just scroll through. And then this was modeled after an actual calabash gourd. And it has a removable meerschaum bowl. Yeah, here we go. So here's your, your bowl. And then I did a, a inset and O-ring. What is um, the O-ring? Is that acrylic? It's just an acrylic. I thought that the wood would expand. But this was before. I actually took this bowl and then retrofitted a proper rubber O-ring here, yeah. which creates your seal. And then I don't, I don't. No do ring this in there anymore. It's kind of decorative, and I think that's about it. So here are the blocks, though. Uh, when I work, I work from square. So I like a squared block, and then with that, I can manipulate it, say, on the sanding table and uh, the bandsaw to remove wood and maintain a symmetrical shape. And also I can scale really easily that way too, if somebody wanted a different size. And this is the gourd, and I've actually never made a true gourd calabash, um, but that's the shape that I used to do these two. I was going to, I never got it finished. I have a few here. If anybody wants to order a calabash from a gourd, we can do that. And here they are, shaped out. And then it presents an interesting problem, especially drilling the way that I drill. I drilled on the drill press using an XY vise, and I'd say most pipe makers are drilling on a lathe, and that's something I'm going to begin doing. Um, had I drilled these originally on a lathe with a block or clamp down here, this whole step wouldn't be necessary. But what I'm doing is I'm going to take this and put a mandrel in, and then I have something for my tailstock to line into, and I'm going to set this on the lathe, and if you skip to the next one, yeah, and then it gets a little weird, because i got to get a cutter in here and then face my top and create my step. And that size is quite specific because it has to match then the bowl. There are more photos. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. And it's done. It's a miracle. It's, done. it's a miracle. These are the first ones. These are the first ones. This is how the, the briar one turned out. You can just whip through. There's a couple of these. And if we skip out of this folder and go into... Yeah. Did you get the, uh, the Mearsham insert from uh, Tim? Yeah. <clears throat> Or was it, did you do the Meerschaum yourself? I used a Meerschaum insert. Did you go to the one that's SB Hansman? The next one down. Can you get solid Meerschaum blocks? Yes. You In the rock? can. I don't know if I'd be so excited to work with it. So this was one, actually, just get back. I just, this pipe was really recent. One more. Oh, the other way. Yeah. So that one was actually meant to be pretty much a copy of the original. So it's really quite similar. But I just finished this pipe, and it was a beauty. It was quite big, too. <clears throat> and he wanted the bowl to have that rounded shape for Meerschaum. So, so, the the so did, you, did you work that Meerschaum from the original shape to that one, then, like? And there's a bit involved with that, yeah. because it's pre-drilled, and it's not, it hasn't been worked accurately. Mm -hmm. So you have to, yeah, you have to take sort of the draw hole and line it up and get something that's... To hold it in, in place. line, yeah. I get a, a <laughs> cylinder in line. Right, Basically, I end up insetting something in the bowl yeah. again. So what's the damage on something like that? Something like that, uh, smooth, seventeen, eighteen hundred. Oh, it's three of them. It's on the shank. Yeah, you can have them right next week. This is uh, a <laughs> mammoth ivory. Yeah, it's a beautiful pipe. What was the price, Mike? A uh, seventeen, eighteen hundred. Goodbye. <laughs> I would say so. And then, uh, so, if you skip back, actually, one. That's, this is the cutting. This is whole step is kind of uh, extraneous, but it's sort of a challenging detail there to get in and cut the inside. Yeah. We'll find your chips on you anyway. Well, the on the other side enough to hold that. That whole bowl in, in position? It is. Well, it's just it's a pressure point, and it lines up with the center, which really lines up with that. So it, it does work. 
Oh, but you can't, you can't force it. Yeah, that's why it's kind of fine. Well, you would just chuck it up. Because that spin has got to have a lot of centrifugal force in it. Not really though. With the tail stock in, it's good. If there was no tail stock, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that little piece that you attach at the bottom to hold it. And then the other thing about a calabash, which is so interesting, from the maker's point of view, is I'm replicating a gourd. It's a, a it's an organic shape. So this inner chamber isn't round. Like it starts round, and it has to meet up. That's my step edge here. But the rest has to conform to the shape of the bowl. Uh, I would want to maintain an even thickness just because I wouldn't want it to get too thin or to be odd looking. But I have to make that by hand. I think there's a good photo of that. Probably coming up, yeah. Just get one more. And then one more. Right. So this, I've done by hand. And that's just filed out. And then the draw hole, if you just skip back, okay, actually you can see it there. See, the draw hole is only to here, and then I've only drilled this to here as a guide. And then I have to do the taper, and then funnel it in. But I like it to be clean, too, so it, it's a nifty little bit of work there. A little bit of elbow grease. Yeah, yeah. And so this I'm using just as a guide, so I maintain a round top edge, so that when I fit the bowl, it's, it's symmetrical in there. And this is the blast, that's the other one. I would have used the same stopper from the smooth on the blast, fit it on top, and then it, it acts just so I, I maintain a clean edge. Is that the stamp? Yeah, just the The bowl ones are kind of cool. Here, Gio. Here's the bowl. So, so what I did was I took this cylinder, and I had it wider here, a wider flat shoulder, and then just sort of forced it in, and then used the draw hole as my center line and hoped that the inside was drilled straight-ish, mm -hmm. right? And then I could <laughs> recreate everything. So then I really had to rework it quite so a bit. So did the top of that Mirsham come kind of just mm -hmm. almost unfinished? Because usually I see that they come, it's got the round dome top. Isn't that briar? That's the briar. Oh, is that the briar? No, so the, that's the Mirsham. Yeah. So, oh. so it looks like it's almost been like a, a blank, and then... It allows you the canvas? No. It was actually totally finished. Yeah. But it's totally finished to what? Like yeah. you would need to have a pipe yeah, that fit exactly. it. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 So I... Did you have to wet it? <laughs> no. I've turned Meerschaum before and you, you don't really. I guess to carve it you could, but yeah. it's really powdery. You just have to go gently. Did you have to do the ring for the O-ring? <laughs> space for the O-ring in there? And then create a space for the O-ring. Yeah, and then the that? issue there is, am I leaving enough bowl thickness yeah. at the thinnest yeah. point where the O-ring is? Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is, the, the O-ring fit is actually kind of tricky, because it can only be a hair above what this fit is. So I fit it so it, it fits in, so I can feel the fit, but it's not tight. Yeah. Well then the O-ring needs to be a hair wider, so I end up having to slip an O-ring on, checking my depth, and it doesn't fit in, i got to like chip the O-ring out, which is tricky on this, because that's quite fragile stuff. So. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the compression that you have for the O-ring. Compression? Like the, the difference, for, the difference from the, the top of the O-ring to the CrossFit area? See, I didn't um, do that map. 0.1 mils standard. Oh, really? 0.1 no, or 8 thousandths of an inch. Really? There we go. Did you maybe consider doing like a cork seal instead of the O-ring? Like how? Uh, I like the O-ring fit. I like it too. The O-ring uh, fits the way to go, I think. Yeah, I think so too, especially now. But I think I think with the messy. cork, it's messy. But I think the fit you can get maybe a little bit easier to fit, it's tighter and smoother. But I bet because you could even hand sand the cork. Yeah, it's got a little you, bit of stretch. It's got a little bit of give and stuff. I think it could. And you could fit it nice and snug then. Yeah. That's good. Good. And there we have it. Let's see how it on. What do you like? What do you do to the meerschaum after you 
What do you coat it with? I didn't coat it with anything. You just leave it? I just After polished it. Polished it. Yeah. So just like you would a normal pipe. Yeah. yeah. Did you use beeswax, beeswax, beeswax or anything? No. I thought, you know. No, yeah. everyone like is doing Meerschaum pipes now. Is doing a beeswax strip. And I, don't, I don't know. I think it's to, to make it look aged. Yeah. Is it? I mean, to give it like a yellowish patina? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the white better. Yeah. He does the beeswax strip. Yeah. 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 He does the beeswax So for the briar one, I had to build the bowl. And it, it is an interesting thing. It presents quite a problem. Just I've actually your tolerance is in here. There's not a lot of wiggle room. And I want a clean, you know, the request has been for a clean surface. So I have to choose the right block. I certainly don't want to make two. And I basically work it the same way. I'm guessing this was easier to work than the beer shunt. Actually, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Once I had the Meerschaum set up like that, yeah, yeah, because this stuff was like the Meerschaum so easy to cut and shape. Okay. You can just like, yeah, I've never used it. Like yeah, and this is the fitting of the O ring process. Measuring, there we go. That's an idea. <laughs> measuring. <laughs> it turned out quite clean. I like that cap. Nice Wait till you see the finish on it. Wait till yeah. the next, the next one. Yeah. 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 It's like passable. Yeah. I'll take one of those. Mm. Just the cap. Just, just the cap. cap. I just need the cap. Hashtag just the cap. Just need the cap. I have a suggestion of how to make a manual for that. So like a holder. Like for a screen. I think we can all agree that seems like a bit cheap. Just oh, to see the other. That seems like a bit cheap. Or use some steel stock. Hey Mike, how long did it take to make it? These took a long time. I, li I think they were literally in the 40 hour zone. Were these special order? They were two different people, <laughs> but they were a long time. I would have saved time um, having a larger lathe That's uh, and, and using the lathe more for drilling. I think I would have shaved a few hours off here and there, but they're just there's just a lot there. They're big pipes and there's just a lot to put together and then to figure out the sizing. a lot of small sizing. details, right? And the sizing's one of a kind always, so. Well, not always, but... So after so the happens. first one, you kind of learn everything on the first one, and mm -hmm. then the second one's a little bit easier. Well, it's not easy, but... This one... This was a really difficult one, because the guy sent me a drawing. He's, I was making two pipes for him, and he sent me drawings, and, I, and he wanted them to scale. This one turned out kind of ironic. This is for all pipe buyers, actually, before you change. Because <clears throat> the drawing was to scale, and really small. And I was like, wow, this is going to be really hard to... Fit and figure out, and and I had it fit exactly to the drawing. And it was actually an awesome pipe. It was like this big, but then uh, when I sent it to him, he's like, "Wow, this is really small." <laughs> and I was like, "What do you mean? It's to your drawing, like exactly as you requested." But he wanted, and he wanted all this stuff. So he wanted like the blasted bowl. He wanted uh, bamboo, but blasted maybe curving slightly, and then a bowl top that had a slight smooth ring, and that was also blasted, all in this, this two-scale size. And the 1250 price is not <coughs> available. Just like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All that work for... That's just the stumble, too, 1250. And then the yeah. stem is an extra yes. five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you use bamboo for that? I did. And then you'll see, I use dark bamboo because of the size, which is a bit of a shame, because people like, you know, you like to keep the dark bamboo. Um, but it was the size that I needed, because I then blasted the bamboo, which is quite a tricky thing also. Did he send you the bamboo or no? Uh, no, I have some here. Because it looked like on the, even in the images, he drew like the knots in the bamboo. Oh, he did. Like, you would, you had would to find a piece of bamboo that was I, like... I don't think there's anybody here. I won't hurt anyone's feelings, but you should see the drawings I get sometimes. Like I've, I've by, by the way, like, I'm recording this. AutoCAD drawings to spec <laughs> by unnamed you know, people. So you have to like find a piece of bamboo <laughs> that had like the knots in the exact... Like, wow. copy. Not, no, I didn't go that far. I, I was just dying. Yeah, yeah, Eric's yeah. sending me Eric, Eric is like hiding now. He's like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did tell you that you can bend some bamboo though once. <laughs> yeah, uh, which I did, but it was tough. Yeah. I'm not overly. I've seen a lot of people do it, soak it, and, yeah. and like make some sort of creative sanding device and stuff. Yeah, you gotta steam it and do it all weird. Bending the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's tiny.
It was an awesome, awesome pipe. But then actually, the, the, there was a problem. The first bowl, I didn't make deep enough. And there wasn't really good capacity. But that kind of worked out. If you keep going, um, the blasting on the first bowl, something weird happened. I don't know what happened, but I got these, like, kind of, one more, actually. I got these, like, really sort of unusual deep marks. Right? Like deep <laughs> Those are wormholes. Yeah, something like that, right? Crazy. What was, what was the, uh, the origin of the block? If it's Greek, it's like, mm -hmm. I can see that happening. No, but they, no, they weren't, actually. They're not wormholes? No, they were not, because I, I know what you mean, and they were not. It was just, like, a softer section. Like, it wasn't, That's I've seen weird. that with the dust. It, it wasn't that. And see how porous it is too. Wow. Just, it just reacted. Looks in a, like plateau. In a strange way. <clears throat> Plus, it didn't have a lot of capacity. So then I ended up making a second bowl for it. So you stain the bamboo after? Blast yeah. It. There's not. Is there a that blast? Is actually, if you really skip right? maybe back again, maybe back in the back to the bamboo, you can see it somewhere. There. Yeah, you can see the bl the bamboo has been blasted. The pipe in the back, is that the pipe you're smoking right now? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Always. Yeah. That's a standby. Yeah. Blasting a, uh, bamboo is really tricky because there's a very thin skin on it. And you have to like, it is kind of harder at the very outer bark. And then it's only like millimeters thick and then it kind of goes into a powder. And you have to like remove this powder and maintain these fibers. Otherwise, it looks terrible. It looks like it's been chewed on. It's uh, it's a real tricky. Th Have you guys tried that? Uh, I've done a spare piece and it looked like shit. Yeah, light. You gotta go. It, the whole thing is patience, light pressure. Just take your time, man. And then it eventually. I don't have that. Hey, Mike, which kind of bamboo do you do? Um, I mean, there's like two thousand kinds of bamboo. I can't. Yeah, I do not know, then. Or it's just a nice bamboo. bamboo. Yeah, yeah. I like. Yeah. I sort of like some. I don't use yeah, it very often. That's a Swedish bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a rare, rare speech. Yeah, it's just yeah, pick yeah. it up at Ikea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, whoa, no. <laughs> I do it to Sweden, climb a mountain. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it turned out really nice, so I love this little pipe, actually. And this is, like, trying to account for the amount of step that would be here and here, so it doesn't look funny. Do you do a spacing right? I do. I always cap my bamboo top and bottom. Yeah. And then... You do a Delrin lining, too, don't you? I do a Delrin lining on the mortise. And then there'll be like a mortise tenon in here. Are you using and then drill through bamboo then? Okay. Do you use a delrin at the at the stumble part, or do you use stainless steel? No, yeah. not stainless steel. Uh, it would be uh, <coughs> delrin, or actually probably be ebonite. Okay. I like blooming ebonite more yeah. than I do delrin. So. Yeah, it, it better for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be pretty thin, no? The whole thing was really yeah, like yeah. A really tiny. Yeah. So in this case, you didn't you didn't have to like because you blasted the bamboo. You didn't fill the little knuckle, not the little knuckle. I don't anyway. Neither do I. I, just, I sand them. I don't. Yeah. I personally don't like the filled look. I don't like. It I just sand I them don't like the Mentos. The, the Mentos. Yeah. Mentos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. I like here's the steam. two. So happily, he took the second bowl. <coughs> oh, well, it's big difference. Yeah.